Hello everybody, Coach Dave here and we're going to do another FIA race review. Uh, in the previous race uh, I managed to get pole position which I published online uh, but kind of bottled the star uh, lap 3, lost the lead and then had to fight my way back up into a podium place. Um, for this one here I did do an FIA track guide for you um, around this lap and um, just before this race started I decided oh, what the hell let me give it a try. I had already done the practice but I didn't quite know the strategy so I quickly looked at um, the live streamers watch one of their races and realize it was a no-stopper so without the complexities of strategy in the way I figured what the hell uh, I think I know how to drive fast enough around here and popped into one of the lobbies and had a go so here we are in qualifying um, I kind of started the lap just a little bit out of the slipstream and I've slowly started to realize just how important the slipstream is in these qualifying uh, sessions for the FIA races so just a word to the wise out there is um, it's so important to get inside a slipstream for any hope of a good qualifying position if you are leading the pack you're going to be in trouble and you're likely going to be outside the top 10 so I've started to learn more and more the importance of that and uh, it paid dividends because here I managed to get my second pole position of the year um, I was pretty happy with the lap except for this final corner where when I was pushing, I tended to miss this final apex, but I did somehow manage to keep the rolling speed, which is actually what you're trying to do is through any corner is keep high rolling speed, especially in this game. And um, a lot of guys were making the mistake of going through that corner in second gear, but the, the key was actually to do it in third and come out a little bit slower, but you'd save that gear change. So 33-0, I looked at the top split guys, I was in the second split here, and a 33-0 actually would have been a top five time in any split, really and sometimes even in the top splits it would have been a pole position. So I was pretty happy with that um, and it was unexpected. Uh, as always, I've tended to struggle a little bit in qualifying. But anyway, pole position, pretty stoked. In the end, I'll give you the, uh, the short story. I ended up winning this race by quite a comfortable margin. So instead of focusing on me, we're gonna focus on the guy starting in second place. And uh, he had a much more interesting race. So. Uh, Excuse me for the pronunciation, I'm just going to call him by his last name, which is Breyer. Uh, he starts in second, um, he was only a tenth behind me in quali, and initially I was obviously quite nervous to not bottle this race, so I was pretty focused on the start. In the end, as the lights go green, I got a slightly better start, I looked at the replay and it was like 500s better, I managed to pull away, warming up the tyres um, before turn one, and I think that actually helped me, because he tried to bum around the outside, so Brea is going around the outside and just went a little bit too fast and goes into the gravel or grass and uh, loses some positions. And this is where things start to unfold a little bit. So the battle that these four guys have is actually really fun. And I figured, you know, always focusing on my race, I didn't want to make this video too boring because I could have just waxed the rickle for 20 minutes preaching apexes. But let's analyze some of the driving from the other guys and see what they get, what they do better than me um, and what I could maybe advice on improving for them even though this is unsolicited advice let's have a bit of fun so Rhea drops down to fourth place um, a little bit eager at the start I mean I've been guilty of that a hundred times in my life uh, uh, but manages to stay in the fight here now the key with this car is to minimize gear changes and also to make sure you get your shifts right and uh, from what I could see watching this replay before commentating on it um, was just in general everyone seemed to be um, shifting a bit too late and also not shifting, not going through one or two corners in the right gears, which, I mean, in this car, just, it just nailed, nailed your lap time. So he gets a small penalty there, no big deal, half a second is nothing to cry about, um, you can definitely still fight. I hope, for those of you who do watch this race, just look at how Brea does not give up, and that is the key thing to all of these GD Sport races. If you have a bad start, or if you get sent into the gravel, don't get frustrated, that is so important, because many times you will find that other people start to make mistakes uh, later on in the race and that is your chance to capitalize even if you made a small mistake at the beginning of the race. I learned this a lot from watching Super GT's videos but also more importantly Tijni. Tijni does not take this even though he's incredibly quick he doesn't take this as a life or death situation he understands that it's a game so take that as a lesson for your uh, GD Sport racing that this is just a game no one's out to kill you Sometimes people will nudge you, but so what, so be it. Stay focused, try to gather up your uh, emotions, because you never know. One day, if you do qualify for a world final, you may find yourself in a position where you do have make a mistake. You can't just restart the game or anything. That's going to be your last opportunity at a world final, so you've got to make the most of it. 
got to gather up those emotions and uh, keep fighting. And I think even though this is not here world final by any means, uh, Brea doesn't panic and uh, he manages to uh, pose quite a good fight back. So after serving his penalty, he's now uh, getting punished for that more so in that he has to fight uh, this guy behind him who just got in front, BFR RK. Nice, that's much easier to pronounce. And um, Tectonic 17 just behind him who's also having a sniff. So what do you do here? He's going to have to get in front of this pack. You never want to be um, the guy in the middle of a three-way fight because that sandwich is a sandwich where you often will end up at the back of. So always a priority as I said in my previous video. If you're in a pack, you want to be leading the pack. Um, if you're in a, a position where it's just two of you fighting, you want to be the person in second place. Because you can benefit from the slipstream, save fuel if necessary, um, let them lead the way and just apply pressure, apply pressure and wait for a mistake. However, when you're in a pack like this, you, you want to be in the front of that pack because it's easy for you to lose one position and in that moment slip all the way to the back of the pack and it's very difficult to come from the back of a pack to the front of it. I mean like really close pack fighting. So in this case here, at some point he's going to have to try and get back in front of BFRK. Uh, BFRK. However, it seemed that he got a penalty there and um, again, half a second is not too detrimental. Obviously at the moment, the penalty system is just limited to um, cutting the track and not to uh, bumping anyone. So it is what it is, but we've got to race with it as, as we see fit. So he gets back in front and now he's got to hunt down the guys ahead of him. Meanwhile, uh, Dave P, Coach Dave at the front, um, he's having a relatively smooth race. Um, I was just trying to be as, uh, as consistent as possible and um, I find that with these cars here, if you get your gearing right, and Gran Turismo has always punished gear changes a little bit too much, it's not that realistic compared to real life, um, then you'll be, you'll be fast. However, obviously if you're racing other people, you are going to have to move around with your gearing a bit more um, when necessary, so uh, you will lose time. So the guy starting in front, if he has a smooth start and he's able to just focus on his reference points, um, that's a ma major benefit, we know that. All right, so starting a fresh lap here and um, the guys in front they started to bunch up a little bit and uh, Brea just set the fastest lap by I think he was actually about three tenths quicker than me on a single lap in the race which was pretty quick um, but these guys start to uh, bunch him up and he's catching them pretty quickly so this is where things start to unfold a little bit and uh, the racing will eventually get quite interesting um, I've always enjoyed this track, I've mentioned this before, I wish they could build this track in real life. And the scenery around it, like now heading down um, this straight here, it looks very much like Mugello in real life, um, which is one of my favorite tracks. Uh, and I mean, this is, uh, I think, situated somewhere near, in, in Tuscany, Florence, that area, and that's where uh, Mugello is. So I wonder if they took inspiration from that, that area to, to make this track, because Man oh man, I wish I could build this one in real life. Obviously the shortened version is not as good as the long one, but still very technical and perfect for these kinds of cars. I kind of wish also that GD Sport would have uh, races with more of their, their road cars and road tires. Um, I often say that that's where the simulation is the most real with, these, uh, with this game, probably because their developers um, are able to drive those cars more often and, and translate that feeling into the game itself. Okay, so he's just bunched up now, um, however the fighting's not about to unfold just yet, uh, he still needs to, um, there are moments where he starts to lose a little bit of time. So we jump to the leader, uh, this guy he's done this once or twice before in Gran Turismo, but often he throws it away. So far everything's going smoothly, um, key thing here, roll the speed through these corners, be very patient on the power. Um, this thing in second gear it does not like uh, full throttle unless you're pointing in a straight line otherwise you get uh, some nasty snap over steer which is why in that final turn it's better to be in third because it's easier to get on the power and uh, just roll the momentum down the hill instead of changing gears from second where you have to be a bit too gentle. Um, exiting there, I'm sure you guys watch this track guide. Um, I wanted to do more of these but I've just realized that the time window between doing the track guide and the race actually happening is a bit too short so I may revert back to the daily races when or if the combination is something that I haven't reviewed before um, so thanks to all of you who did watch those track guides it's just it doesn't make sense um, given that most of you don't even have time to to watch them before the next race 
so I'm still debating what the best format is uh, for future track guides on the channel I'm definitely going to be doing an Assetto Corsa uh, track guide soon um, but yeah cutting back to the guys who are racing for P2 so Breyer hasn't made any moves here however he does the mother of all sends and manages to pull it off just at the last moment Wesson didn't quite anticipate him going down the inside um, fair enough to him I mean Breyer really came from a long way back but in my opinion that was actually quite a clean move so I wouldn't uh, criticize uh, him too much there then we're gonna stay in the slipstream here and uh, just see what he can do to try and close up the gap to the guys in front he's now got their slipstream remember he was at one point in p6 he's now moved his way up to p4 and he's still in contention for some decent points in this race um, and again the key lesson around all this is to not give up so yes he didn't have the best start but he's gathering up everything um, actually doing in my opinion some pretty good moves and in my from my point of view hasn't missed any fundamental um, or made any fundamental mistakes since then in terms of missing apexes and stuff like that the two guys in front start to pull away but we actually jump four laps ahead and uh, Wesson is now uh, making a fight back um, for that uh, fourth position and the guys in front are also trying to starting to box so things really get bunched up now and um, it's a case of wondering you know how hard can, should you defend with the guy behind you who's trying to make moves but you know is slower versus the guys in front who are also boxing if you miss that opportunity to get into their slipstream into their fight um, that could be gone for good so you always got to consider um, these things when you're in a pack fight or just you know if you're fighting with someone else and there's a, there's a group that's not far ahead sometimes it's better to concede your position to try and catch the guys ahead obviously in this case that doesn't happen um, yes uh, Wesson gets in front here but I don't think it's for very long if memory serves me correctly and luckily the two guys in front are fighting even harder so they're going to bring themselves towards uh, Brea pretty soon so brilliant move there on the outside um, with from the yellow uh, is this are these Mazdas yes from the yellow Mazda uh, he now gets into second place or at least maintains second place and uh, now the two-way fight has become a four-way fight and I love these kinds of races and I think they tend to happen more often uh, with the slower cars and the faster cars because a small mistake is not punished as much in these cars as it is in say uh, a GD3 where you can lose easily two or three tenths uh, in one corner and then your race is pretty much over unless you get a nice slipstream so I, I really again enjoy the slower cars and with a bit less grip yeah, I think it makes the racing uh, much more interesting so let's see what unfolds here we've got three or four guys uh, fighting for P2 Bray is hunting obviously he's had he's made a big recovery now um, I've actually pulled away considerably so the win unless I make a mistake is out the question it's now you got to fight the people that are in front of you make sure it's clean and um, hopefully land up in front of all of them so there Wesson he goes I think he he wasn't actually intending on uh, nudging uh, I don't even know his name Nick 91 but things get quite messy over here they get a little emotional and uh, Nick in the end sends it in a bit too hard uh, Wesson is not actually trying to nudge him or anything but Nick takes himself out Nick 91 takes himself out by being a little bit too aggressive and I think closing the door um, Wesson was understeering him to him in the first place but they were both they got caught up in the moment one of them uh, lost out and in the end uh, a four-way fight becomes a three-way fight we've all been there I've made that mistake many times and I'm I don't quite know the solution uh, to being able to control your emotions in those moments when you're fighting we now skip ahead again and uh, now it's, a, it's Wesson versus I think it's a Polish driver sorry can't say your name <laughs> so th they start to box and uh, Breyer is now having really a good look around these guys still exiting that corner in second gear it should have been third I'm telling you you, you I th one of these two drivers in front actually does exit it in third gear um, and when I was re-watching the replay you could see that at, at the moment that Breyer goes for second as he tries to go around the outside here but I don't think this works um, every time he tried to change gear they would just get a small jump on him um, in that little moment so again you have to watch uh, the top 10 leaderboard replays of these of the lap times to see what sort of gears they're using it's not uh, someone asked me the other day to um, give advice on this for for every car but it's it's impossible to know for every car it's better to see how the crowd um, sort of gets there with the knowledge that they have at hand so always just watch the top 10 leaderboards to see 
uh, how the gear changer is going. Often with the turbo cars, it's better, just as a rule of thumb, um, to uh, to shift earlier. Wow! So Wesson there, I don't know how he hangs on to that. He, I don't, I think he was actually trying to go for an inside move there. Realized that he cooked it, and uh, the Polish guy understandably closes the door as he takes his line, and somehow Wesson just managed to hang on. So that should have been a spin, but in the end, it was some good driving. BFR RK has caught right up again so he also had a little bit of a anonymous middle stint um, but because of all the fighting that happened in front of him he's now also back in the fight for P2 again emphasizing the point of being patient so here Brea he sticks to the rule of leading the pack he goes for the inside a little bit of a nudge I think the move was on and uh, the, the Polish guy should have given a little bit more space but now he's compromised the yellow car is now compromised with uh, BFR RK um, now going for the attack Meanwhile, Breyer has now managed to get in front and starts the final lap in P2 after ending lap 2 in P6. So, really good fight back for him. In the end, the two guys fighting behind him uh, managed to slow each other down. And this is a really good point on why you should be leading pack fights instead of being in the group. Because the leader of that pack fight can easily break away as the group fights for what is effectively the second place position in that group. In the end, he manages to uh, get the lead here and uh, I think um, avoids any threat from the guys behind um, to stage a brilliant recovery and I hope you learned something from uh, his driving and his style of overtaking. Um, it was aggressive, I'm all for a bit of aggressive driving, but it was fair. Um, he doesn't push anyone off into a wall or off the track, so fair play to him and uh, seeing that he's part of the PR1 uh, he's got PR1 in his name, I assume that he's actually part of a pretty good, uh, he must be a pretty good sim racer to start with, and you could see that. Uh, he just missed out on pole, could have been that he didn't get the right slipstream, and uh, in, the, in the race he set a, a pole position, I mean a, a fastest lap which was three tenths quicker than mine. We now jump to me, a couple of corners to go, I end up winning this thing, it's my first FIA race win in a very long time which is why this is called Breakthrough. Obviously, the previous race I got pole, but I managed to throw away the lead. Probably would have finished P2 in that one, to be fair. Um, but this one managed to bring it home, which was really satisfying. I know it was the second split. Uh, my DR is has been taking a hit recently, but you still got to win the races that you should win. And uh, I am finally, finally managed to do that here. Um, so pretty happy and hoping that this trend continues. This was a result of practice and uh, paying attention which is as I mentioned in my previous video one of the mistakes I made was not respecting my competitors and not doing enough practice so there you go I hope you enjoyed that I hope you enjoyed the review of some of my competitors and uh, until the next video I'll catch you around the next lap big thank you to my patreon members as always these guys are the legends which keep this channel going and obviously to my channel sponsor Thrustmaster if you're looking for some coaching Hit me up on my website. Till the next one, cheers.